Well, the death toll continues to rise in Syria as fighting rages on between rebel and government forces. Activists describe today as one of the most violent since the uprising began about a year ago. And as Syrian, this, hap, this is going on as Syrian forces say they're complying with international mediator Kofi Annan's peace plan by pulling out of cities and towns. Now, the UN is set to send a team to Syria in hopes of reaching a peace deal and a ceasefire within 48 hours. So, is an end to the bloodshed possible in the near future? To dig deeper into this, Middle East an, uh, analyst Ahmed Fadi joins us now. Welcome, Ahmed. Um, so, how promising? Is this peace plan? Uh, the peace plan, if it if it is uh, followed, respected, and implemented, it can uh, we can have a breakthrough with the events. Unfortunately, the reality on the ground says that the Syrians are uh, mastering the art of uh, just uh, giving uh, words and uh, false uh, promises. When it comes to implementation, the record is quite mediocre and it's almost non-existent. This has been the style uh, of uh, the management from the Syrian regime throughout the crisis. If the date that's been uh, set by the Syrian government, April 10th, is the date that suppose they should cease their military operations, I am anticipating much more violent attacks that will take place uh, in the coming uh, 48 hours. I still don't trust that Bashar al-Assad will comply or respect his promise. Now, uh, it is hard to believe that peace is right around the corner when we are seeing one of the bloodiest days in quite some time. Um, the Syrian president, um, acceptance of this peace plan is, um, you know, and withdrawing the troops is being met with skepticism by rebel forces already. Not only rebel forces, but by other heads of states, his regional uh, neighbors, uh, 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 international uh, powers, nobody is taking uh, Bashar al-Assad promises at face value. Uh, they are uh, already building a case that the entire world is, is against them, uh, and they sure have a great talent for a Broadway production if they will be qualifying to get a visa to visit the United States after he is deposed from his office. Now, um, Russian's foreign minister has attacked the group, um, the Friends of Syria. It's a group of Western and Arab nations that supports arming the opposition. And he has said that this is not helping the peace process at all either. Nobody sees that the actions of the uh, Bashar al-Assad and his regime is helping to solve the crisis. It just makes the situation much more complicated. Uh, yesterday was, and today was uh, two of the bloodiest days that we have seen uh, uh, innocent uh, victims fallen. Uh, the Assad lives in a fantasy that he is not the aggressor, but he is subject to a major uh, world conspiracy uh, plot against his regime because of the prosperity that the Syrian people and democracies that they enjoy in, under his uh, leadership. Now, um, we are hearing contradicting numbers as to high, ha, how um, high the death toll really is, but it is important to note that there is violence going on on both sides, um, but it's hard to know really what's going on there because journalists are not allowed in the country. Journalists are not allowed in the country. Uh, peacekeepers will also have a problem to get into Syria. That's part of the Annan plan. Uh, there was a talk uh, at the UN about uh, the need that those peacekeepers to be armed. And the Syrian government is refusing to allow any peacekeeper with any form of arms uh, uh, that they may uh, possess, not even for personal protection. So the Syrians are wasting time. They are playing a game uh, of uh, wasting opportunities. And I can foresee that their end was not going to be any different than the end of Muammar Gaddafi and how the Libyan people have dealt with him. Now, um, a UN group is expected to arrive in Syria shortly. Um, what can we expect um, to come out of that? That is an administration uh, delegation. They are, are going to check uh, the, the, uh, the sites where they're going to be placing their uh, peace observers. They're checking the routes uh, for the humanitarian uh, aid uh, convoys. 
but uh, until we see peace observers on the ground, until we see that there is safe uh, corridors have been established to deliver the uh, humanitarian aid, and until we see ceasefire by the uh, Syrian army that's using heavy tanks and heavy artillery, shelling innocent civilians in Syria. Now, when we see any of these things happen, there, there's going to be a, a potential. But right now, there is nothing of that sort is happening. Okay, and it is the ceasefire on both sides that they are hoping to achieve. Are you confident or hopeful that that will be able to happen? Uh, if the uh, Syrian uh, government uh, cease fire uh, within 48 hours, according to the, uh, Mr. Kofi Annan's plan, the opposition are going to stop uh, firing as well. But they are going to keep, during the first 48 hours, defensive uh, positions. Uh, rebels are uh, quite uh, ready to cooperate, and they are cooperating with Mr. Annan through his deputy, Mr. Nasser al Qadwa. Uh, and uh, Kofi Annan is keeping a daily uh, contact with the Syrian uh, government All right. well, we are Minister of Foreign Affairs. We are keeping a close eye as this story develops. Appreciate you coming on the show. That was Middle East analyst Ahmed Fatih.